Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon everyone. Sorry, good evening. Okay, so let's begin our class with Umar Kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay, so uh, can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Okay, so boleh nampak eh? Okay, so um, today... Um, we will uh, begin our lecture with, um, we will continue, okay, our lecture with uh, chapter 5, okay, the last chapter or la the last topic, which is thermochemistry, okay. So basically, for this thermochemistry, uh, we will cover for two weeks, okay, this week and next week. So hopefully uh, by next week dah settle lah, okay. Sebab uh, settle tak settle, kena settle juga by next week because next week is already in, uh, uh, kita dah masuk week 14. Okay, so uh, we have uh, seven subtopics. Okay, we have introduction to thermochemistry, enthalpy change of reaction and then calorie metry, determining enthalpy of reaction, Hessel's law. Okay, I hope if you still remember this one, Hessel's law. Uh, saya dah pernah explain to you a little bit, okay, this uh, during your um, uh, lab session, okay, determine the enthalpy formation of magnesium oxide using Hessel's law. Uh, so basically, kat sini baru kita nak belajar uh, and the topic is not uh, in the earlier part, it's actually uh, dah dah hujung-hujung jugalah, okay. So um, and then uh, 5.6, lattice energy. So this one also, you dah, uh, I have been uh, introduced to you the, uh, for this uh, term, lattice energy. You belajar dekat mana? Chapter 3, okay? Lattice energy. And kita akan pakai balik, uh, okay, uh, in this topic. And uh, we will relate this with the bond uh, Haber cycle. And then the last one is the application lah, okay? So kita pakai application in the renewable energy. Okay, so... We will go first to the introduction to thermal chemistry, okay. So at the end uh, of this uh, subtopics, you should be able to explain the energy exchange between system and surrounding. So what is system, what is surrounding? So you can belajar lah, okay, in this introduction. So basically, thermal chemistry is part of the thermodynamics, okay. They are very small parts lah. So thermodynamics too, uh, they are uh, very big. Um, topics, okay. So, kalau you ambil, uh, let's say you want to further in chemistry, uh, especially pure chemistry, you akan belajar this topic thermodynamics ni untuk sub, satu course. Okay. Macam uh, you ada course uh, chemistry kan, session 092. Uh, so, kat sini uh, thermochemistry is just very tiny part. Kan? Kalau thermodynamics ni, ah, session let's say 093, dia specific untuk thermodynamics saja. So you can imagine for 14 weeks you belajar just on thermodynamics. Ah, so that's why sebenarnya basically uh, uh, this topic is very uh, large scope dia. Eh? Okay. So uh, thermodynamics basically sebenarnya study uh, is actually when we want to relate is we uh, relate uh, with the energy okay and anything with related with energy is actually thermodynamics so this simplify kan kat sini lah heat is actually related to thermo and uh, dynamics is related to work done okay uh, maksudnya kerja lah so kalau you belajar very uh, details in thermodynamics you akan belajar selain daripada ada heat akan ada juga work done so you belajar kat physics kan? Uh, basically thermodynamics ni is chemical physics. Physical chemistry. Uh, okay. So ada ada campuran chemistry and physics. Okay. So thermal chemistry basically bila kita mention about uh, we want to study 
uh, about heat kan ketemu chemistry is basically on uh, uh, on the chemical reaction so bila kita cerita pasal heat heat ni ada dua lah either they absorb or evolve okay either dia serap ataupun dia release dia uh, dia bagi kan okay so because of we have this absorb and evolve so the value of the uh, that energy is either the negative or positive value so negative we know that it is exothermic positive it is endothermic and this delta h okay kita uh, baru masuk intro sebenarnya tak explain lagi what is delta h eh? so delta h is actually enthalpy also uh, one type of energy but this one is related to uh, heat Tapi kita panggil dia bukan heat eh, delta H is enthalpy. Okay, nanti you akan belajar details lah uh, on this part. Okay, yeah, ni contoh dia lah. So, burning of fuel is uh, considered as um, exothermic reaction. So, heat, uh, release heat while melting of ice, uh, heat absorb. Okay, so uh, you must know... Uh, Bila kita mention about thermal chemistry ni, mesti akan ada definition uh, with uh, system and surrounding. So you kena faham dulu lah what is system and what is surrounding. So the definition for system basically here, the substances that involve in chemical and physical changes. So actually apa benda yang kita nak uh, nak study. So basically because thermal chemistry kan, kita akan study the chemical reactions right. So that's why kita nak study the chemical reaction. So that chemical reaction is the system. Okay, that's why dekat dekat sini the system consists of reacting molecules. So you have A plus B produce C plus D. Uh, so this reaction is, we call it a system. Okay. Okay. So what is surrounding? Everything else that interact with the system. For example, you put, uh, uh, you you have this uh, reaction in the conical flask. So system tu, uh, the reaction lah yang ada kat dalam ni kan. So the surrounding can be the container. Okay, ataupun uh, it can be the um, temperature outside ni. So kat luar tu is also the surrounding lah. Kot lah you buka kipas ke ataupun you panaskan ke you heat this one uh, that, that also is the surrounding okay so we have uh, three types of system eh okay we have open closed and isolated system so what is open uh, it exchange between matter and energy to its surrounding maksudnya contoh you ada air kat sini okay example here hot water in an open container you biar dalam bekas yang terbuka, okay. So akan ada uh, air panaskan, lama-lama dia akan jadi sejuk. So that's why dia ada heat change, okay. Dalam masa sama, matter also will change. For example here, hot water, dia akan vaporize. Okay, you belajar tajuk liquid before this, akan vaporize jadi water vapor, jadi gas. From liquid, akan turn to uh, uh, gas. Okay, so kat sini ada perubahan in terms of matter and energy. Okay, and then for closed system, basically this is the exchange uh, of energy only with its surrounding. Meaning that you are the sama, bekas yang sama tapi you tutup. Okay, you still akan, you bila you biar lama, you still akan ada lama-lama air tu dah tak sejuk. Eh sorry, dah tak panas. Okay, so that's why uh, uh, ada heat changes kat situ. Perubahan uh, heat, energy kan. Tapi uh, the matter will not change because even though the hot water will vaporize okay tapi because of their closed container so vaporize and then dia akan turun balik ke bawah we call it as condensation okay ni yang you dah belajar previously lah in uh, liquid okay and next one is isolated so isolated neither matter nor energy can be exchanged from system to surrounding because of what because of dia dah tertutup in a vacuum Maksudnya kat sini dia tutup, bukan tutup biasa, dia vacuum kan lagi, insulated kan. So for example hot water in a thermos flask. So kat sini uh, tak ada, kita assume lah tak ada heat uh, changes, tak ada juga matter changes. Okay. So basically uh, sebenarnya kita nak uh, measure uh, uh, heat changes is basically this is the best lah. Okay. We want to follow the isolated system. Okay, so when we talk about thermochemistry, of course you tak boleh lari daripada perkataan heat. 
bila heat is actually related to temperature. Okay, so what is actually heat? Heat is actually Q lah kan? Uh, Q, you belajar dah kat sekolah dulu kan? So Q is a transfer of energy between system and surrounding due to their temperature difference. Okay, related lah dengan temperature eh. So again, uh, kita cakap sama lah you belajar H. H tadi entropy, walaupun saya tak explain lagi in details what is H. Basically Q and H are related. So bila dia positif, dia adalah endothermic. System absorb heat, so energy is added. So when you have negative Q, so it is exothermic. Okay, yang tadi adalah endo. So the system evolves heat when you have negative Q, so energy is released. Okay, kalau you tengok kat sini eh, okay, yang penting you just faham uh, your reactions is actually your system. Okay, surrounding tu yang sekelir lah. When we talk about the what is the value of Q, so basically Q yang kita mention is uh, uh, kita mention about the system. Okay, so maksudnya kat sini the Q, kalau Q negatif, maksudnya system tu negatif, automatically dia akan release heat tadi kan. So dia nak release, mesti akan ada yang terima. Okay, so siapa yang terima? Who will accept? Surrounding will accept the heat released by the system. So automatically when system is negative, the so surrounding will become positive. Okay, so the flow will go from negative to positive. From uh, exothermic to endothermic. Sebab system akan release heat and yang akan terima dia adalah surrounding. So the value system is less than zero, surrounding will be more than zero. So uh, vice versa for the system that absorb heat Dia terbalik Dia nak absorb tu daripada mana It will absorb from the surrounding So surrounding yang akan pula release heat So surrounding will give the uh, energy Will flow the energy towards system So positive system to positive So flow will go from surrounding to system So the value system will become more than zero And surrounding will become less than zero Okay, awak you faham lah eh, dia punya, dia mesti ada uh, relationship lah kat situ eh between system and surrounding. Okay, so the units of energy basically the uh, SI unit is joule, okay, ataupun joule tu sebab value dia sangat besar, normally kita akan convert jadi kilojoule lah. Okay, where the joule, one kilojoule is equal to time power, three joule. So joule is the amount of kinetic energy possessed by a one kilogram of object moving at a speed of one meter squared per second. Basically this one is actually this one lah. Dia punya uh, unit dia yang sebenar. Okay kalau you ingat lagi lah um, you belajar uh, tajuk gases kan. You have R constant. Gas constant. Ada dua jenis kan. Satu is 8.314. Another one is 0 0.0821. What is the unit? 0 0.0821 is liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. Kalau 8.314, the value is joule per mole joule per mole Kelvin. Per mole per Kelvin eh. Okay. So here, uh, kalau you, uh, you use this PV and RT. As I always say, normally this R, we will use this one, 0 0.08 to 1. Because the pressure is in uh, ATM, the volume liter, temperature Kelvin lah. Okay, paling pun pressure, uh, let's say dia bagi tor ke, you boleh convert to ATM, right? But it's not that you cannot use 8.314 here, boleh, tapi you must convert so many things. So, so that you can convert but because of joule ni is this one tadi. Unit dia is kilogram meter square as negative 2. Okay. So make sure lah kalau you nak convert, convert to this one. That's why selalunya I always mention to the students PV and RT just use 0 0.0821. So bila nak guna 8.314, this one is for example equation yang ada R but that one related to energy. Tak kisahlah kinetic energy ke apa. For example uh, root mean square velocity Yang you ada 3RT over mm square root tu kan So this R is basically the 8.314 Okay so ni just lah Tiba-tiba kita relate balik pada chapter 4 kan Ni just nak tunjuk lah because of this uh, kind of unit Okay so check point 1 Cuba jawab ni 
The process of dissolving ammonium nitrate in water makes the solution cold. Determine the sign of Q and explain the energy exchange between the system and its surrounding. So what is the sign of Q? Anyone? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Uh. Ada yang jawab negatif? Okay, so kita nak tengok betul-betul kat sini eh. Dia positif ke dia negatif? So kat sini basically uh, okay, kita ada water kan? So you want to dissolve ammonium nitrate. Okay, so maksudnya kat sini proses uh, sign of Q dia uh, positif or negative eh. The answer is yes, positive. The sign of Q is positive, meaning that this is uh, endothermic reaction. Maksudnya energy is absorbed. Okay, why? Because in my previous two classes, the answers uh, their answers are uh, apa? negative. They bagi negative because they kata solution become cold. Okay, so to to answer this, uh, you cannot simply look at the final answer. I mean, they kata solution to cold je. Okay, maksudnya they release heat. Yelah kalau you baca macam tu je, logiknya macam sejuk, release heat lah. Betul tak? Sama macam tadi melting ice kan. Dia kalau you baca tadi contoh melting ice ah, ni. Melting ice maksudnya daripada solid kepada liquid. Maksudnya dia akan terima uh, heat absorb in this case. Kan sebab dia apa dia nak jadi liquid. Kalau in this uh, solid kepada liquid. Okay, dia different sikit lah daripada yang ni. Kalau in this case, you tak boleh simply kata uh, sejuk dia release heat. So, you kena tengok betul-betul, okay, the situation here is, okay, um, the, uh, you baca ni lah eh, actually explanation dia, ammonium nitrate uh, consists of ionic bond packed tightly together. So, you imagine this is solid, dah packed together, okay, then you imagine macam you nak uh, larutkan garam lah, ammonium nitrate is garam kan? Nak larutkan garam lain, so the solid. So when it comes into contact with, with water, the polar water, okay, remember this is polar molecules, dia ada hydrogen bond kan, okay, will interact with this one. Ia ni ionic, ionic compound, okay. So dia akan interact, dia bukan buat bond ni, dia akan interact, okay, intermolecular forces with ion from this uh, ammonium nitrate, okay. So it will eventually make them disperse. So it takes energy, dia perlukan energy to do this Untuk dispersekan this ammonium nitrate So that's why dia will absorb uh, the energy from the surrounding So sebab tu the value of Q is positive Sebab you imagine bila salt Lagilah kalau dia adalah uh, soluble salt So bila masuk dekat dalam air dia akan pecah menjadi uh, NH4 plus plus NO3 minus. To uh, make this uh, as ions, water ni perlu bekerja. So bila dia bekerja, dia perlu absorb energy from outside lah to make uh, this uh, uh, ammonium nitrate to become ions. Okay. So jawapan dia positif eh. Okay. So <coughs> so habis untuk introduction. So basically apa yang you perlu tahu dalam 5.1 uh, you have to know what's the difference between surrounding and uh, system and surrounding. Okay. Now we are talking about, we will talk about entropy change. Okay. So entropy change. Okay. Nama pun change eh. So change is value uh, ni lah uh, simbol segitiga tu change. Entropy is basically uh, heat. Okay. Tapi H bukan bahasa so heat. H, H is entropy lah. Okay, is related to heat. Okay, so at the end of uh, this subtopic, you should be able to explain the entropy change of reaction in terms of heat changes, Q. So how you nak relatekan delta H dengan Q. And then explain the chemical reactions that are accompanied by entropy change. Okay, kita tahu sebab dia ada dua kan. We have exo and endothermic. And then sketch. So kena belajar juga secara nak sketch energy profile diagram for exo and endothermic. Okay and then define definition eh. 
define ni ada cara dia untuk you ingat Saya akan explain later The standard entropy formation Bila kita kata cerita pasal standard So standard is actually Of course you have to follow some some certain conditions Standard condition dia apa Macam STP Okay untuk gas kan STP So what is STP? Standard temperature pressure So temperature must be zero Pressure must be 1 atm right ha, Sama juga dalam kes ni dia not lah follow the STP but dia ada standard condition dia Okay and then this was standard entropy for formation, combustion and neutralization And then write a balanced thermochemical equation Nampak macam senang Basically this equation is not the the common equation This is a thermochemical equation So ada ada rules and regulation that you need to follow To write a balanced thermochemical equation Okay and then of course bila kita ada benda-benda melibatkan uh, number ni akan ada juga calculation and you akan involve also with the stoichiometric calculation when you involve a chemical reaction. Rxn is reaction eh. So of course lah chemical reaction A plus B produce C plus D. Bila ada tiba-tiba ada tiga kat sini, dua, sini lima ke sini satu ah kat sini dah boleh buat stoichiometry. Sama juga. So you have to apply what you have learned Um, in chapter 1 here. Okay. So entropy change. The heat content of the reacting system is known as entropy. So heat tadi eh H uh, is not uh, heat tapi dia actually entropy tapi dia related to heat content. Okay it is the total energy of system at constant pressure that cannot be measured. You cannot simply measure okay let's say macam contoh kat sini You have one mole of NOH. What is the heat content of NOH one mole? We cannot measure like that. Okay, so susah you nak jawab. Tapi, however, we can measure enthalpy change, delta H. Okay, when you have one mole of NOH react with one mole of HCl to form one mole of NACL and one mole of H2O. Basically, bila you ada equation, kat situ you boleh measure enthalpy change. Okay, because uh, enthalpy change delta H is actually the amount of heat absorbed or heat release Depends lah, sebab dia absorb atau release uh, When the chemical reaction takes place Okay, so bila kita measure about delta H tadi It is actually, bila kita kata change kan It's actually the difference between product punya enthalpy dengan reactant punya enthalpy So that's why delta H reaction is H product minus H reactant kalau you nak measure dia satu je macam tu, you tak boleh nak measure. Tapi bila you dapat this delta H, then you can know the H product minus H return. Okay, so that's why basically the delta H is also related to the Q, uh, the heat lah. Okay. So tadi saya cakap kan, we have two uh, types of reaction. We have exothermic and also endothermic. Okay, benda ni pun you dah very familiar with this. Okay, so for exothermic reaction, our process is actually, it will uh, release or give off heat. Okay, so they transfer from system to the surrounding. So delta, uh, delta H value will be become negative. Okay, and the heat content Uh, of the product we, is less than heat content of the reactant. Sebab tadi kita kira delta H, H product tolak H reactant kan. So kalau value of delta H ni uh, rendah, so of course product akan jadi lesser than reactant. So um, terbalik daripada uh, endothermic process because it has to be supplied by the surrounding. So dia terima lah. Okay. Surrounding yang bagi. Surrounding dia exothermic. Tapi sistem kita sendiri is actually endothermic. Okay, so value positif. Now reactant yang terbalik, it, uh, the H, uh, atau when the heat content is less than the product. Okay, kalau you tengok kat sini basically uh, kenapa kita letak heat dekat product for exothermic and heat dekat reactant for endothermic. Basically ini just not, uh, just want to show that okay we have um, Because delta H, uh, dia apa, uh, dia release uh, apa, uh, to show that uh, this uh, apa ni, basically, macam mana nak cakap eh, heat ni just nak tunjuk yang kalau dia exothermic process, heat will uh, will put at, at 
here on the product side and uh, for endothermic heat heat will put at the uh reactant side but but basically kalau you nak buat equation you tak perlu lah letak heat ni okey sebab benda ni sebenarnya but kalau saya nak explain detail sebab you tak belajar lagi uh, why heat is put uh, here and also here you akan belajar this one dalam uh, next semester chapter 2 if i'm not mistaken lah chapter 2 Okay, lepas tu saya tak nak explain sangatlah in details uh, why heat is uh, here on the product side for exothermic and why for endo why it has to be at the reactant. Okay, cuma yang saya boleh cakap basically because of exothermic ni dia release heat so that's why heat dia dekat sini kalau endothermic dia uh, perlukan heat so that's why heat tu perlu berada di uh, reactant. Basically tu basic je lah yang saya boleh cakap sebab uh, details dia Nanti pening pula sebab you tak belajar lagi. Okay, that one nanti next semester. Okay. So, for the energy profile diagram, tadi saya cakap you have to sketch, okay, uh, exo and endothermic reaction. So, for exo, okay, dia punya key point dia, you mesti ada exist, kan? The first one, exist. So, you must have X and Y exist. So, label as entropy for Y and then reaction pathway for X. Reaction pathway or reaction progress pun boleh sebab bila X tu, as you move from left to right, basically dia sebenarnya adalah reaction. Daripada reactor nak jadi product. So, that's why the reaction pathway ataupun reaction progress. Okay, so apa lagi kena ada? Bentuk. Okay, the shape of the Uh, peak tu, okay, for exothermic kat sini, apa ni namanya uh, reactants should be higher than product. Okay, so lepas tu you ada pula value of EA. EA is the activation energy. Ni pun saya takkan cerita lah sangat. Activation energy ni you akan belajar details uh, next semester in chapter 1. Okay, so basically EA uh, dia punya jarak dia is actually from reactant to the peak sampai puncak eh. And then delta H. Uh, this is very important. Delta H kan dia product uh, is actually product H product minus H reactant. Maksudnya dia punya change kan. So of course it will be in between reactants and products. In the middle ni This part eh. Okay. So this is for exothermic reaction. Why for endothermic, dia akan jadi terbalik lah. Sama exist, you have to put as entropy and reaction pathway or reaction progress. It's just that the shape is now reactant will become lower than products, okay. EA masih sama from reactants to peak. So, dia akan jadi lagi panjang lah kat situ eh. And then the delta H all again masih sama is actually the change between reactants and also products. So, kat sini value dia. Delta H eh. <coughs> Okay, so you can practice lah eh, on how to sketch this. So now, let's look at this checkpoint two. Classify the following reaction as exo and do. <coughs> so now you tengok kat sini lah sebab dah ada value kan? Negative and positive. So negative is exothermic reaction, positive and do. Okay, ni simple lagi lah straightforward eh. Sketch the energy profile diagram for each of the above fraction. Okay, I give you one minute. Cuba sketch dulu. Cuba sketch tanpa tengok slide tadi. Rasa-rasa boleh ingat tak? Point yang perlu ada untuk this part. Cuba draw sekejap.
Okay. Dah draw ke? Kita check eh. Dapat sama tak? So exo tadi okay. Exo here. This is exothermic. So directant mesti higher than product. Okay. Kalau endo, rectant lower than product. Okay. The rest you have to include lah. The exist, entropy, reaction pathway, the letter H, the EA and then uh, ajak. Ini you tulis lah sebab bila dia ada equation you have to write the equation lah. So here is the returns, here product. So mesti tulis eh return and products. Okay. So now we move to standard entropy change. <coughs> entropy change tadi delta H right? Standard kalau dalam bentuk simbol we write it as uh, delta H not. Ada bulat kat situ kan? So that Uh, uh, bulat tu is actually referring to standard lah. Macam okay previously apa ya? Uh, ni uh, vapor pressure P pure. Kita mention that one is pure. Tapi pure tu basically is the standard lah kan. Maksudnya dia punya value is uh, constant at that specific temperature. Uh, so sama jugalah here standard maksudnya kita ada standard condition yang they need to follow dan dia tak akan berubah dah. Itulah value dia. Okay. So this <coughs> entropy change of reaction is actually dependent on temperature, pressure, physical state, concentration and type of allotrope. I think temperature tak ada isu lah. Memang you ubah temperature of course heat uh, entropy akan berubah kan. Heat kan. Pressure pun sama. Okay. Because standard basically we are doing here. Uh, our pressure here is 1 atm. Kalau you tiba-tiba buat kat bulan ke apa, ah, dia dah lain lah pressure dia kan. So next is physical state. So what is physical state? Ah, state yang you selalu belajar. You belajar chapter 4 kan? State of matter. You have solid, liquid, gas, even aqueous also state kan. So dalam uh, tajuk chapter 5 ni eh, when you go to the equation, uh, apa balancing equation, physical state is very 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 ha, tiga tiga kali eh important it is compulsory to write the physical state maybe dalam chapter 1 kalau you buat balance equation you tak tahu state dia kan gas ke liquid ke apa you tak letak masih diterima but for this chapter it is compulsory you tak letak salah walaupun equation you betul tapi physical state you tak letak salah. Kenapa? Because the entropy change depend on this kan. Contoh eh. You tengok kat sini. Uh, hydrogen gas uh, react with oxygen gas. Nampak tak? State dia sama. But produce satu water liquid, satu lagi water vapor. The value of entropy are different. Tak sama. Dia ubah je physical state, the entropy akan berubah. Okay. That's why Your physical state is very important in this topic. Okay. And then uh, concentration of course lah. You ubah uh, apa dilute or concentrated akan ubah juga the enthalpy change. Okay. And then type of allotrope. You belajar bila? Chapter 3. Iyakah? Chapter 3 kan? Okay. For example carbon. Carbon uh, solid. Tahu tak? Tapi solid tu dia ada beberapa jenis kan. Uh, contoh kita ada graphite, kita ada juga bentuk diamond. So yang nampak kat sini, yang lain semua sama kan. CO2, O2 ni O2. But graphite and diamond, kalau you tengok the change of enthalpy also different. 394, 396. Walaupun lah nampak lebih kurang. Tapi consider as different lah. Value dia tak sama. So that's why physical state tu macam saya cakap tadi lah. It's very very important eh. Okay. So, what are the conditions to get the standard entropy change? Okay, so condition dia, all the reactants are in their standard states. What does it mean by standard states? Okay, contoh eh. Hmm. Okay, hydrogen. What is the standard state for hydrogen? State dia apa? Uh, gas, liquid, solid, aqueous. Gas. 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 Yes. So adakah dia H gas ataupun dia H2 gas? H2 gas. Yes. H2. H2 gas. So saya bukan kata H uh, ni adalah salah. 
Dia betul juga. Tapi bila kita mention about standard, dia mesti dalam bentuk molecule or dewey atom dan dia mesti gas. Standard ni pula dia mesti standard at 25 degree Celsius. Uh, room temperature eh, 25. Bukan zero. STP tu zero kan? Uh, because that one is absolute zero kan? Now is 25. So at 25 kita tahu hydrogen di dalam bentuk gas. Itu standard dia. So you imagine anything yang you boleh nampak dengan mata kasar you at 25 degree Celsius, itulah standard state dia. For example, um, KCL garam lah kan. Standard dia dalam keadaan solid. You boleh nampak dia powder at 25 degree Celsius. For example macam itulah. Unless you jadikan dia concentration tu lain lah. Okay. So ini maksud standards. Uh, okay apa lagi? Uh, water. Water dia molecule. Standard dia water molecule lah. Tapi kita tahu water we have solid, ice, liquid, uh, liquid water lah. Uh, gas, vapor kan. Tapi standard dia dalam bentuk liquid. Ini maksud standard eh. Okay. Tadi so, saya cakap temperature is 25. So pressure is 1 atm. Okay maksudnya pressure kita sekarang eh. Here 1 atm. And if it's a concentration is 1 molar. Okay. <coughs> so These uh, are called standard enthalpy change of reaction lah. Maksudnya dia mesti follow this, all of these conditions. Barulah dia consider as standard. Okay. And it will involve the actual number of moles specified by the coefficient in the equation. Oh, so coefficient of the equation. Maksudnya kalau A plus B produce 3C for example. So this 3 kita assume itulah number of mole dia. Okay. <coughs> So, standard enthalpy ada yang you perlu tahulah as for now ada tiga. Okay, formation, standard enthalpy formation, standard enthalpy combustion, standard enthalpy neutralization. So, first we go to formation. So, bila standard delta H naught kan. Bila formation kita tambah je satu lagi huruf F. Formation eh. So, what is the definition of standard enthalpy formation? Okay, kita baca dulu eh. Enthalpy change. Ya, yeah, entropy kan. So entropy change is delta H when one mole of substance is formed Nah, mumpul formation, form lah. Okay. From its constituent elements in their standard states under standard conditions. Ah, Banyak sangat tak standard keluar kat sini. Kalau hafal ni tanpa faham memang awak jalan langgar batu sikit tu terbalik terbalik lah. Okay. So Nak faham ke benda ni eh. Ni definition eh. Kalau you dia ask for definition you kena ada perkataan-perkataan ni. Tapi the main thing yang saya nak you faham. Okay. Standard enthalpy formation. Maksudnya standard enthalpy this is enthalpy change lah. Kan. One mole. Ni syarat dia. One mole perkataan one mole kena ada. Okay. Substance is form. Because this is formation right. So for example you nak form C. Okay, kejap. Tukar colour lah. You nak form C daripada A plus B. So, this C mesti 1 mol. Tak kira you nak balance macam mana pun. Bila you buat equation nanti, balance lah yang lain C mesti 1 mol. Saya pernah explain this one during lab session. Entropy formation of magnesium oxide. Okay. Ha, ini kat sini lah datangnya standard entropy formation. This uh, this C mesti 1 mole. Okay. By definition lah. Okay. 1 mole of substance is formed from its constituent element in the standard state. Ah, benda ni ah. Apa benda? Apa benda ni? Under standard condition ni you tahu lah. Maksudnya temperature mesti 25 degree Celsius. Pressure mesti 1 atm. Kalau dia concentration dia mesti 1 mole lah. Apa lagi eh? Apa lagi? Apa lagi eh? Apa lagi Oh, all the writers must be in the standard state lah. Okay. So, okay. Apa maksud ni? Constituent element in the standard state. Maksudnya, senang kita pergi contoh lah terus. So, okay. Kita pergi pada contoh you punya uh, lab session hari tu. MGO. Uh, untuk dapatkan standard formation of MGO, okay. Basically, dia mesti uh, form daripada constituent element. Daripada element yang ada dekat dalam ni, Dalam keadaan standard. Meaning that MgO must form from Mg and oxygen. 
Okay. Dia beza. Kalau you dapat MgO, tiba-tiba you buat reaction between MgCl2 with water for example. You boleh dapat juga MgO tapi nanti ada plus apa-apa-apa kat sini lah. Ada plus kan. So this is not standard entropy formation. Okay. Yeah. Sebab syarat dia tadi, ini mesti elemen daripada sini. And this one ada extra pula. Kat sini biasanya formation you akan dapat satu saja produk. Okay. So you have to follow this one and dia kata mesti in their standard states. Standard states tadi, magnesium at room temperature, solid. Oxygen at room temperature mesti O2 dan dia mesti gas. Okay, MgO at room temperature is solid. So this is standard. Then after that, you have to Ni contohlah, saya dah ajar terus balance kan. Sebenarnya balance nak ajar lepas ni. Tapi tak apa, boleh je kan. So kalau you nak balance the equation, this must be one mole. So kalau nak balance, kita tahu the standard way we want to balance. Okay, O2, you just put 2 here. So 2 here, dah balance kan. But this is wrong. This is not the balancing equation for standard enthalpy formation. Sebab you must have MgO, one mole. So O2 now will become half O2 and Mg become 1. Then it still can balance. Syarat dia. Okay. So that's why apa yang saya tunjuk ni, this is actually the definition. Kalau you faham benda ni, maksudnya you tahu okay ni mesti one mole, ni mesti standard uh, element, you boleh terjemahkan ni to this definition. Okay. So the delta HF, okay jap. Cik badam ni serabut eh. So the delta HF not for the elements, untuk ni untuk elements saja ya, in their standard states are zero. Macam tadi lah, magnesium kan, solid. Apa lagi nak bentuk daripada dia kan? So that's why value ni adalah kosong, delta HF. Sama juga uh, hydrogen gas. Sebab dia walaupun dia molecule tapi dia molecular element, dia masih element so the value is zero. Okay. Kalau you tengok kat sini ya, some of the commons lah eh, the standard tapi formation. Nah tengok, <coughs> aluminium. <coughs> Solid, value dia kosong. Bromine, ni nampak tak kat sini? Liquid, kosong, gas, ada value. So the standard state for bromine is actually liquid. Not gas, not solid. Okay, ramai juga student akan salah kat sini eh. For group 17 eh, okay we have fluorine. Chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine. Lah. Okay. So group 17 is special. So these two standard at room temperature is gas, bromine, liquid, iodine, acetine, solid. Okay. So you have to take note lah. Bromine liquid baru dia kosong. Bromine gas dia ada value eh. So carbon tadi saya cakap ah, dia, dia uh, solid kan tapi solid tu pula dia ada dua jenis uh, yang common lah graphite and diamond. So graphite ni yang standard where the value is zero. Kalau you pakai diamond value dia jadi 1.88. Ada value lah maksudnya dia bukan dalam keadaan standard. Okay macam dia fluorine gas dia mesti F2 walaupun dia molecular element dia bukan atom tapi dia still element. So value dia zero. Okay nitrogen, oxygen. Okay, <coughs> saya lupa lagi nak cari. Kelas saya tadi saya dah mention uh, phosphorus is also element. Kalau gas ada value, there's something I think maybe phosphorus solid something, dia value dia kosong. You have to know lah solid, liquid or gas. Nanti saya double check for this part eh. Phosphorus dalam bentuk apa yang value dia kosong. I think solid. Okay, macam uh, S satu lagi ya. Eh. Uh, S uh, sulfur eh. Sulfur ni kadang-kadang kita pakai juga tau. So sulfur, you tak boleh letak S plus O2 produce SO2 lah for example. Tak boleh. S dia dalam keadaan S8. Dalam keadaan yang stable dia S8 dan bentuk dia adalah rhombic dan dia adalah uh, solid. Barulah you dapat value dia kosong. Standard dia. Okay. Uh, ni the rest ni common of the compound lah. Tadi elements kan. So compound memang ada value lah sebab dia dah campuran. Mix uh, of the elements. Tapi ni lah value dia. Maksudnya dia patutnya dia tak akan berubah. Tak ada pula contoh water kat sini. Okay takpelah. Kita tengok. 
Okay. So tadi saya sebenarnya dah ajar dah uh, to write, uh, uh, I mean the basic uh, method to write uh, the basic step to write the chemical equation. So kita apa? Kita tengok balik contoh kat sini. So here dia kata write a thermochemical equation okay to represent the standard entropy of formation dia nak delta HF not of CO. Okay, you dapat je soalan ni, you keluarkan dulu. Okay, ni uh, formation kan? So, you keluarkan dulu produk. So, you buat arrow terbalik. So, maksudnya bila formation dan dia adalah gas, mesti dia datang daripada elemen. So, we have C, we have O. Right? When we have C and O, so now we go back to carbon. What is the standard state for carbon? Solid and also dia mesti graphite. Okay? So, the solid and graphite. Okay and then what is the standard state for oxygen? Dia mesti dua atom molecule kan? Then dia mesti gas. Okay barulah lepas tu balance the equation. Okay syarat dekat sini lah. Balance equation but the coefficient of the product must be one mole. Okay jangan usik apa-apa kat sini. You balance kan? That's why kat sini oxygen will become half. You punya CO akan jadi one mole. Okay? And bila kita kata thermochemical equation, dia mesti diakhiri, okay, must ended with delta HF not equals to what value? Dalam maksudnya dalam satu equation tu, selain pada you ada uh, chemical equation yang biasa, ujung tepi belah kanan tu mesti ada negatif apa? Positif apa? Delta H tu mesti ada. So this value dia akan bagilah. Tak, tak logik lah kena hafal. Unless uh, value tu element. Kalau element kita tahu automatically kalau dia element dan dia standard value dia kosong. Kalau compound uh, like this dia akan bagi. You just kena salin balik je. Dekat tepi kat ujung tu. Okay. So can you try write this uh, thermochemical equation for A and B? Dia nak standard entropy of ambition. Cuba tulis dulu sekejap. Nanti you check balik dengan jawapan saya. Okay. Dah ke? <coughs> so for solid uh, sodium hydroxide. Okay. So of course kita akan start again. Start je dulu dengan AOH. Lepas tu keluarkan dia punya elemen dia semua. Oxygen plus uh, hydrogen. Okay. Na. Okay. Lepas tu kalau untuk liquid ethanol, C2, H5, OH, keluarkan juga. So we have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And then balance kan. Lepas tu last kali barulah letak dia punya physical state. Ha, tak kisahlah physical state you nak letak awal apa pun tak apa. Yang penting balance lah. Okay. Allah. Tertindih pula. Okay. So kalau you tengok kat sini. <coughs> you mentioned this is solid. So of course this is uh, must be solid. And then hydrogen mesti gas, oxygen mesti gas, uh, sodium mesti solid. So balance, make sure this must be one mole. Okay. So the rest two you just balance lah as uh, usual. 
So mesti put this one at the end uh, of this uh, of the equation, the value of the delta H F, and then for B. Okay, tadi kita ada carbon kan? So carbon mesti you put as graphite lah. Kalau tak ada graphite ni salah lah. Okay, walaupun you letak solid saja pun salah. Sebenarnya kena. Sebab solid ada berapa jenis tadi kan? Allotrope dia. Ada graphite, ada diamond. Okay. Hydrogen gas, oxygen gas. So liquid ethanol. So make sure this one also must be one mole. Okay. So ni syarat dia lah. Okay. So we have finished on the standard entropy uh, formation. So now we move to standard entropy combustion. So combustion we just change F to C. So here the entropy change when one mole again, one mole juga of a substance completely burn in excess oxygen under standard conditions. Again, perkataan standard condition tu kena ada. But here, one mole of substance completely burn in oxygen. Maknanya completely dibakar. So Meaning that here the one mole is for the reactant. Okay, kalau formation tadi one mole you adalah product. Right, for combustion one mole adalah reactant. Okay, and mesti ada oksigen lah. Okay, ni contoh lah beberapa contoh combustion of hydrogen, benzene semua ni. Okay. So kita nak tengok ni macam mana kita nak uh, write a thermochemical equation for liquid benzene. Okay so liquid benzene now you put uh, C6H6 you letak yang tu dulu on the left side okay so this is liquid. Combustion kan tambah oxygen gas. So any uh, combustion of uh, hydrocarbon ataupun organic compound yang ada carbon dia akan produce CO2 plus. H2O right? Okay then when you want to balance the equation make sure this liquid benzene is one mole. So you usik lah yang lain tu tak apa but the C6H6 mesti maintain one mole. Okay so macam contoh kat sini lah one mole so oxygen will become 15 over 2 produce 6 CO2 and 3 H2O and dekat ujung tu mesti put as Delta H not C negatif apa value dia. Okay. So beza dengan formation tadi kat sini je lah. One mole dia dekat uh, apa dia punya fraction. Okay. So try to write this thermochemical equation. So kalau combustion you always remember lah. Okay. Oxygen mesti uh, mesti ada. Cuma produk dia tak semestinya will produce CO2 and water. Kalau dia tak ada macam aluminium kan? No carbon, no hydrogen. Tapi dia burn in oxygen. You rasa apa produk dia? Dia akan dapat oxide. Okay. Cuba buat dulu. A and D. Sekejap lagi kita check jawapan. Okay. Kita cuba tengok eh. Okay kalau for aluminium. Now mesti ada oksigen. Okay syarat dia yang penting this one mesti one mole. So you akan dapat aluminium oxide. Okay just balance. So both akan dapat this one is 3 over 4. This is 1 over 2. And make sure you have to write it. Uh, write again the enthalpy eh of combustion and then for this is the organic compound we have C, we have, uh, we have H and oxygen so of course the product akan dapat CO2 and water. Okay so just balance lah macam biasa. The most important this part must be one more. Okay and mesti put this delta H not C lah. Okay boleh eh. 
Okay, so tadi dah habis uh, number two, right? Uh, combustion. So now we are moving to the standard entropy of neutralization. N. Okay, kita put as N here. So apa definition dia? This is entropy change. Okay, when one mole of H plus aqueous react with one mole of OH minus aqueous to form one mole of water. Okay. Of course, understand that condition lah. So, bila you tengok kat sini, uh, you belajar dah before this, neutralization is actually uh, between acids and base. Okay. Kalau kita tengok, kalau by definition is actually H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous produce H2O liquid. Tapi bila you buat equation, you tak akan buat equation dalam bentuk ion macam ni, right? Kita akan buat equation uh, neutralization between acids and bases. Acid and base, kan? So for example, NOH, HCl produce salt plus water, right? Yang kita nak tengok uh, for standard entropy here is this water. Water yang ni eh, okay? This one. So this one mesti one mole. No matter uh, what is the mole for salt, uh, acid and base, yang penting water mesti one mole. But in this case, for example, it's a one to one ratio. So senang lah. Okay. You can just straight away dapat one mole of water. Okay. This is the value of delta Hn. For example, second example, we have CaOH2, calcium hydroxide and nitric acid. Okay, kalau you balance, basically water ni balance macam biasa lah. You, water you akan letak as 2, right? But here because water we want as 1 mole, so that's why you akan usik the rest lah. So this will become half, the calcium hydroxide also will become half. And if you look at the value of the Tah HN is rather similar. Okay, I know this statement is not in your slide, okay? Saya baru tambah lah sebenarnya. The standard entropy of neutralization of any strong acid and strong base okay, is almost constant about negative 57.3. But tu nampak lebih kurang. Sebab basically you nak produce the same water molecule. However, okay, if you look at the equation number 3, potassium hydroxide and HCN. Okay, again, you tak belajar lagi ni, you akan belajar details this one in chapter 3, semester 2. HCN is actually weak acid. It's not a strong acid. The weak acid. So that's why when we go for weak acid, the punya value akan berubah. Okay, because weak acid, kalau saya explain sikit je lah, eh. sebenarnya ni akan belajar tajuk acids and bases, chapter 3, next semester. Kalau uh, strong acid, contoh HCl, dia nak jadi H plus kan? You nak dapatkan H plus untuk form water kan? So, you akan pecah jadi H plus plus Cl minus kan? So, this H plus because this is strong acid, dia akan dissociate menjadi ion ni 100%. Okay, completely dissociate. Tapi kalau dia weak acid, contoh macam HCN, dia still dapat H plus plus Cn minus. But this one is a weak acid. So, dia uh, dissociate partially. Maksudnya not equals to 100%. Kurang daripada tu. Sebab dia weak lah. Okay. So details ni you akan belajar lah later eh. Next semester. Sabar dulu eh. Okay. So just nak tunjuk lah. Uh, kalau kat sini value dia different sikit. Okay. <coughs> so now let's try write this thermal chemical equation to represent the standard entropy neutralization between sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide. Cuba tulis jap. Tapi dia tak bagi pula data H. Tak apa, tulis je lah dulu equation. Sepatutnya dia akan bagilah the value of the delta H. You rasa sama ke tak dengan yang ni? Negatif 57.3. Ha, cuba buat dulu.
Okay. This one, sulfuric acid kan? H2SO4 plus potassium hydroxide. Basically, you akan dapat <coughs> K2SO4 <coughs> plus water, sorry. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, the thermal chemical question. So, you have to balance lah. Okay, cepat cu saya tak cantik eh. Okay, you have to balance lah. Make sure this uh, water is one mole. Okay, bila you balance, K2SO4 akan jadi half. So, H2SO4 pun akan jadi half. In this case, kalau you tengok eh, uh, sebab dia tak bagi value kan. This value is actually a little bit different from this one. Lebih tinggi pula. Ini lebih rendah sebab we acid kan. Kalau ini lebih tinggi daripada ini. Why? Because this one is H2SO4. H2SO4 is a dewey atom of hydrogen kan. Dia consists of dewey atom. So you produce 2H plus tambah SO4 to minus. So of course the value of enthalpy pun akan a little bit different. Okay. Itu just saya nak justify lah why the value is different. Okay. But for this topic you tak perlu pun nak perlukan justification. Yang penting you faham how to write the equation and you must include the value of delta H not value eh kat ujung tu. Okay. What is time now? Okay, 4, 4. So now tadi uh, okay kita masuk sub topic baru eh. Okay. The uh, sub topic yang sama sub sub Subtopic, okay. Sub subtopic, uh, which is 5.2.4, the stoichiometry. Okay. Bila kita ada equation, of course kita boleh relatekan dengan stoichiometry. Ratio between reactants and product, reactants dengan reactants, product dengan product. Okay. Ada stoichiometry lah. Ratio kat situ eh. So, um, the value of enthalpy change of n depends on the stoichiometry of the equation and also the direction. Okay. Kalau maksud stoichiometry maksudnya contoh kat sini if you have uh, this equation. Okay. Sekejap saya kena tukar color pen. Okay. So equation yang ini uh, C plus O2 let's say lah you dapat the value is negative 390.5. Okay. Kilo Jol. Sekejap eh. Okay. Sekarang saya nak try tanya dulu. Tak ada mengena dengan tajuk ni tapi why do you think the value tak ada kilojoule per mole? Kalau yang ni tadi kan kilojoule per mole. Kilojoule per mole kan. Why? Because this one is just relate, related to the a general equation means that the delta H is actually the H product minus H reactant. Okay. Because this one Uh, although dia one mole tapi dia tak uh, really specific. Dia boleh lah. Basically we can say that this is the heat formation of CO2 or we can also say this is the heat uh, combustion of carbon. The, val the value would be the same. Tapi kalau dia tak letak per mole kita boleh just consider as in general this value is actually product uh, minus reactant lah. Okay, so sekarang kita nak pergi balik pada um, apa, this subtopic. Sebenarnya nak explain when the reaction is multiplied by a certain factor. For example, you multiply with two, the overall this one. The value of enthalpy also must be multiplied by that factor. Two lah, you dapat the value of data H. Ni pun sebenarnya saya dah pernah explain uh, masa lab session sebelum ni eh. Hanya kalau dua, dah ada dua lah. Kalau you bahagi dua, kena bahagi dua juga. Okay. And then same goes to the direction. Let's say C plus O2 produce O2, this value is negative charge. Negative charge pula. Negative sign. Okay. So when you suddenly want to reverse the equation, contoh reverse dia jadi terbalik, the value will become positive value. Dia akan jadi endothermic reaction pula eh. Okay kita tengok contoh untuk calculation eh. Let's say you have the chemical equation here. Okay negative 56.5 kilojoule. So kalau you tengok kat sini is this the standard entropy formation? No because the this is not element right. Walaupun dia satu mol tapi ni bukan elemen. Kalau elemen dia kena sulfur tambah oksigen tambah hidrogen kan. Okay so is this the combustion 
again no because you don't have uh, oxygen here okay neutralization apatah lagi kan sebab it will produce uh, salt water dia berada di tengah uh, water dia adalah rectin okay so that's why ini contoh jugalah this is the um, the normal equation so the value of delta h is just at the value of this uh, SO3, H2O and H2O so lah. Not specific to the formation or combustion or neutralization eh. Okay, so contoh A. Calculate the enthalpy change, delta H, when 0.05 mole of SO2 dissolve in water. So we know that base equation, saya pernah mention before this, sekejap eh, mana eh. Hmm. And this one. This point yang last kali ni Okay, jap, saya padam jap The last point here uh, The actual number of moles Specified by the coefficient In the equation Meaning that the coefficient From the equation Can be served as Mole Sorry, this one So we can say that Kita assume lah, dia dah balance eh So the one mole of SO3 will release negative 56.5 kilojoule in this reaction. One mole of H2O again value dia adalah negative 56.5. H2SO4 was formed with the value of negative 56.5 kilojoule. Itu maksud dia. So now bila dia ask for let's say you have 0 0.05 mole. So berapa? So of course you can do the stoichio. Matri ratio, kalau 1 mol release, negative 56.5. Is 0.05, okay, you buatlah ratio. So this is negative 2.83. How about question B? Calculate the enthalpy change when 24.5 gram. Now dia bagi gram. So of course, dah ada gram, you have to convert to mol first. H2SO4. So kita tahu 1 mol, 56.5, negative. So kalau this mass, make sure you Divide by molar mass, you dapat mol, uh, mol dia 0.25. So what is the value? Okay. And then last, mass of SO3, this is SO3, needed to generate 100 kilojoule. Uh, now, one mol SO3, dia punya value negative 56.5. Kalau you have 100 kilojoule, okay. So berapa? mol dia kat sini kan. So negatif lah. Generate. Dia still, dia tak akan mengubah uh, exo or endo. So kita tak reverse the equation. Tapi berapa mol kat sini? Uh, so again you can calculate lah. Kan? So let's say bila 100 kilo joule you will get 1.77 mol. Tapi dia nak mass right? So you have to multiply with the mol lah mass you akan dapat mass. Okay? So this stoichiometry basically yang you kena faham is the relationship between the reactants and product with the enthalpy delta H here. So bila you dah tahu tu, you can just um, uh, apply again what you have learned in chapter 1 uh, to get the value of apa mole ke mass macam yang dia minta sebelum ni lah. Okay. Ini semua yang you dah belajar lah sebelum ni eh. Okay. Can you try? Do this checkpoint six. I'll give you one minute. <coughs> so you have to know what is graphite. Dia tak mention apa-apa pun. Dia cakap graphite je. So graphite is carbon kan? Ah, you sekarang dah kena tahu lah eh, graphite tu apa. So, you kena settle for A first, then you boleh dapat untuk B. Okay, cuba jawab sekejap.
<clears throat> okay. Kita try tengok jawapan eh. So first, uh, you need to write a thermochemical equation. Even tak ada soalan A pun untuk jawab B, nak tak nak you kena juga tulis equation. Sebab you nak calculate uh, graphite burn tu kan. Sebab kita tak tahu dia punya balancing equation dia macam mana kan. So what is the coefficient right? So of course, first is you must uh, write the equation. So carbon, graphite, okay, plus oxygen because this is combustion, it will produce CO2. So that's it. Is. So dia tak ada hydrogen lah dalam kes ni sebab tu dia tak ada water. Okay. And tapi, okay, this is the value. Okay, or basically maybe you can just, you can lebih specify lah. Sini is carbon, this is kilojoule per mol. Cantik sikit lah. Okay. Habis bukannya maksud tak boleh eh letak kilojoule je. Boleh. Okay, calculate the heat evolve when 0.483 gram of graphite is burn. This is graphite. So dia kalau 0.483 gram meaning that you must find the mole first because this one is one mole this is the value right okay kalau you bahagi molar mass this is the mole that you get 0 0.0403 so you buat ratio lah you buat ratio okay you buat ratio here you akan dapat the value darab dengan this mole this is the value for 0 0.04 of course lah mesti kurang daripada yang asal kan Sebab dia less than one mole. Okay. Boleh eh? Clear eh? I hope you faham lah eh? Sebab saya rasa the rest tu, stoichiometry tu you dah familiar kan? It's just that how to relate or have the relationship between reactants with the uh, enthalpy value ataupun uh, uh, product with the enthalpy value. Okay. Lagi satu, cuba jawab yang ni. <coughs> one minute. Calculation juga eh. Cuba jawab. Consider direction given below. Okay, dia bagi equation, dia bagi data H. Calculate the entropy change when again this is entropy change for 3H2 and 1 and 2. Tapi dia nak if you have 0 0.25 react with 0 0.25 juga. Okay. Cuba buat. Okay. So uh, kalau dapat soalan macam ni uh, again sama juga benda ni is stoichiometry ratio okay when you get a question like this okay you must uh, have the relationship first. So let's say if you have 3 mole of hydrogen this is the value kan yang dia release. Kalau 0 0.25 the value that release is negative 7.68. Okay while for nitrogen because this is 1 mole okay based on the equation even though you have 0 0.25 mole, so the nitrogen will re only uh, will release negative 23.05. So ada dua jawapan kat sini. So which one yang you nak uh, dapatkan the value of enthalpy? Sebab 
Value entropy tu kan sepatutnya kena sama je kan So here you need to find the limiting reactant Okay again kita apply balik what you have learned in chapter 1 Okay you you cari balik okay Here of course lah hydrogen is the limiting reactant Because they release um, energy yang paling kurang lah Okay so that's why kita ambil energy pun yang based on the Limiting reactant punya uh, calculation Okay <coughs> Okay, so now okay, okay, kita akan masuk 5.3 ya, eh, calorimetry So, uh, uh, yang ni memang takkan sepak uh, masuk uh, for the whole uh, subtopic today tapi at least kita masuk sikit lah sebab calorimetry ni um, dia sebenarnya simple benda pun you dah belajar MC theta, MC delta T tu tapi uh, you akan belajar lebih details ada a few uh, types of uh, question uh, showing a few types of problems where uh, dia punya calculation dia lain-lain um, uh, okay maksud dia kat sini for this uh, subtopic calorimetry saya tak boleh nak cakap macam bila student tanya me saya nak kena hafal formula yang mana untuk uh, calorimetry i cannot say uh, i cannot say that uh, uh, fix equation for that kind of type of calorimeter okay sebab you still kena refer to the question that's why saya akan explain lah kalau sempat hari ni kalau tak sempat esok saya akan explain uh, ada cara dia okay so i hope you can bear with me uh, first maybe saya akan bagi introduction dulu lah for the calorimetry <coughs> of course kita akan uh, use a device device we call it as calorimeter okay use untuk apa to measure the enthalpy change kita don't, don't mention tadi thermochemistry ada chemical reaction kan. So how you want to measure the enthalpy change? By uh, putting that uh, reactions in the calorimeter. So device ni lah yang kita pakai eh. Okay. So why we are using the calorimeter specific lah not a simple container. Any container you pakai. No. Not like that. Okay because the calorimeter is designed to minimize the heat loss to the surrounding. Sebab lah nama pun kita nak kita nak measure uh, heat change uh, of the reaction tapi kalau dia macam mudah nak keluar so macam tak ada guna lah you nak measure so tak tepat lah kat situ kan so that's why kita ada specific uh, device lah okay so and this calorimeter is nearly an isolated system so that's why you tak boleh simply ambil um, uh, macam uh, botol lain lah contoh botol lain macam ni kan uh, and this is the calorimeter no Ni saya boleh kata this is the close close system sebab dia penutup. Tapi kalau you buka dia akan jadi open system. Tapi dia bukan isolated sebab botol plastik biasa kan. So um, basically maybe you can use like a thermos macam ni for example. Tapi actually this one also is not a thermos sebenarnya. Dia dia tak insulated pun. Dia kalau you pegang panas dia panas, sejuk dia sejuk. Okay, dia kalau yang thermos yang betul-betul tu uh, it can be the as calorimeter lah, isolated eh. Okay, when it's isolated system, the Q system is equals to zero. Why? Because is bila isolated ni maksudnya dia tak ada transfer of heat, tak ada transfer of matter kan. So that's why Q system is equal to zero. They maintain kat situ lah. Okay, the, the change of... Uh, heat tu. Tak ada perubahan ya. Eh? Okay so this calorimeter okay kita boleh dapatkan juga the value of heat capacity where um, <coughs> uh, the unit here is in kilojoule per degree Celsius where is actually uh, amount of heat over temperature. Okay joule over temperature in degree Celsius lah ataupun in Kelvin. So, we have two types of calorimeters. Ada dua jenis yang you perlu tahu. Okay, we have constant volume and constant pressure calorimeter. For constant volume, okay, 
Contoh dia adalah bom kilometer. So kenapa kita panggil bom kilometer? Because of, uh, we will uh, study normally lah for the combustion reaction. Kita bakar dia eh. Okay kalau you tengok balik. Okay. Kecil sangat tak apa nampak. Basically for example lah. Okay this combustion paling senang lah. Saya suka, kita banyak pakai this one uh, in food industry. For example that's why saya tambah this nutrition fact. Maybe you selalu nampak kan benda ni dekat uh, belakang bekas makanan apa plastik makanan ke apa kan. Dia ada calorie count this one. Calorie ni kan. So macam mana dia dapat this value calorie. Actually calorie ni uh, unit dia calorie kan. Calorie ni actually adalah conversion unit dia actually daripada joule juga. Okay so that one is actually you you count that one is from this this experiment. You do the combustion process okay maksudnya you habis sikit makanan you tu you letak kat mana kat sini. <coughs> this is a sample holder kan. So you put your sample here okay then you bakar you give the oxygen kat mana oksigen nak masuk. Ini saya tak nampak lah. Okay, this is the oxygen inlet here. So, saya akan masukkan oksigen lah. So, kat dalam ni penuh dengan oksigen. Okay. So, nak bakar pun you tak akan buka dan uh, masuk ke api ya. Eh. You will have the ignition wire. You akan bakar daripada atas. Okay, you bakar sampailah dia completely burn. So, kita, uh, we will not measure the temperature. Sebab heat change kita akan measure in terms of temperature kan. So we will not measure the temperature inside this um, bomb kilometer ni. Kita akan measure yang kat luar ni. This one. Okay, this one yang saya lorik ni. Kita measure apa? We put water here. So water, we will get the initial Uh, temperature and we will also get the final temperature. After dia dah bakar, panas kan? So dia akan uh, release heat kepada air ni, dalam bekas air ni. So kita measure kat sini that's why ada thermometer. Okay this one. Ha, lah. This is the thermometer. Okay. Everything kita measure is outside. Water. Sebab kita tak, yelah kalau you masuk tu meter lah ni terbakar lah pula kan. So kita ambil luar sebab kita tahu uh, water pun dia akan absorb heat tu. So kita measure based on that one lah. Initial temperature of water berapa, final temperature of water tu berapa. Kita measure kat situ. Kita kacau pun dari luar. So sebenarnya kat sini water ada satu lagi lapisan yang kat luar ni kan. Okay yang ni, uh, ini, yang ini, in this one we call it as jacket. Dalam tu ada vacuum. That's why the insulated or isolated system. Okay. Sangat-sangat tertutup rapat lah kat situ. Okay. Ah, ni contohlah uh, for constant volume. Bomb kilometer. Okay. The normal one that we use, we use in the experimental work is constant pressure which is the coffee cup kilometer. Okay, for example macam ni kita biasa guna styrofoam lah, polystyrene cup tu kan. Kita tindihkan dua tu. So here uh, basically supposedly penutup ni is very <laughs> rapat lah kalau ikutkan eh. Insulated cover. That's why I'm not really can imagine on how you are doing your experiment previously. Sebab you just tutup je kan. Kalau dah terbuka of course heat tu pun akan terkeluar kan. Tapi lah kita tak boleh nak elak lah. Okay that kind of experiment. Tapi kalau ikutkan macam ni lah. Okay. You put your thermometer here and you put your stirrer. Anything memang you tak akan usik dah. So you just measure the temperature and also the um, uh, you nak stir pun you akan ada stirrer khas kat situ. Okay. So this one we call it as constant pressure. So from here okay the very basic equation that you need to know is this one. Okay, saya highlight ni jadi biru kan. Eh? Slide you tak ada tak siap saya. Tak color biru pun lah. Okay. You have to remember that this is isolated system for both. Tak kisahlah dia bomb ke, dia coffee cup ke. Kita assume dia isolated. Bila isolated, even though dia taklah isolated sangat. Sebab tu dia ayat dia nearly an isolated system. Where kita assume the Q system is equals to zero. Okay. So what is actually 
in the system. So dalam sistem tu sendiri, of course the reaction. Kan? Chemical reaction tu is the system. Dalam masa yang sama, you tak boleh abaikan the calorie meter. Okay. And then, uh, of course, if you have the solution there, or water, macam contoh kat sini ada water kan, you have to include that one. So in general, you just include that uh, Q system is equal to zero also equals to Q water or Q solution plus Q calorie meter plus Q reaction. It just that, macam saya cakap lah, ada banyak sangat um, contoh problems yang saya akan tunjuk nanti, okay, where sometimes maybe dia tak ada mention about solution. Tak ada langsung dalam uh, information tu. So you boleh abaikan this one, you just add Q cal plus Q reaction. Or sometimes boleh jadi juga yang solution ni ada, calorie meter dia tak ada. So you can uh, just assume in the system we have solution and reaction. Logic ke reaction tak ada? Tak logik lah. Reaction tu yang you nak buat uh, reaction kan? So of course this reaction sebenarnya yang you nak cari. Okay nanti pada bila you pergi pada solving problem you akan faham lah apa yang saya cakap ni eh. Okay so kenapa ada dan kenapa tak ada ni actually dia bukanlah tak ada. Sepatutnya semua benda tu ada. Calorie meter ada, solution pun ada. Dia cuba maybe dia tak mention dalam um, soalan tu ataupun dalam information tu is because of the value is very very small so that the value can be neglected can be neglected. So maksudnya it's negligible sampai sebab kecil sangat so boleh abaikan. Kadang-kadang uh, sampai macam tu. Okay tak apa nanti you akan pergi pada contoh soalan you akan faham lah apa yang saya cakap ni. It's just that you have to know that the Q water ataupun Q solution the formula is MC delta T kan. So C here is CS. S is specific heat capacity and Q calorie meter is C calorie meter darab delta T. Okay so Kenapa different? So as I, uh, you can see here, okay, kita ada dua lah. What's the difference between heat capacity and specific heat capacity? So heat capacity, C huruf besar eh, dia punya simbol dia, is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of substance by 1 degree Celsius. Meaning that kita nak measure berapa banyak heat nak, nak naikkan 1 degree Celsius. Maksudnya, from 1 degree naik kepada 2 degree berapa heat yang diperlukan. Okay that one is heat capacity. So kita tahu the heat is directly proportional to delta T. So kalau you nak jadikan dia equation you put as constant here. So this constant yang kita nak cari where this is the heat capacity. So constant or heat capacity is equals to Q over delta T. And here Q you need the joule kan. Delta T is degree Celsius or Kelvin. Okay so this is heat capacity. So what is the difference between specific heat capacity with heat capacity? So ni kita we put as symbol dia C rot kecil S. I know that previously you always do like this MC delta T macam ni je lah kan. So now because we want to um, differentiate between C besar dengan C kecil sometimes tulisan you tu besar ke kecil sama je kan. So that's why we want to specific so C okay, we put as CS. So kita tahu dia specific lah. Uh, specific heat capacity. Okay so what's the difference? Also the amount of heat required to raise the temperature but this one is for one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Meaning that kita nak naikkan temperature satu degree untuk satu gram. Dia specific untuk satu gram berapa amount of heat yang kita perlukan. So Bila dia dah specific nak perlukan ada mass, contohlah dia more than 1 gram, so you can calculate. You can put the mass here. So Q will become M C S delta T. Okay, so you nampak tak? M C S delta T, this one is Q C delta T. So basically C is actually M darab dengan C S. Okay, because of uh, bila dia dah include. Sebenarnya basically uh, heat capacity uh, normally uh, given for the calorie meter. Device tadi kan? Device calorie meter tu dia akan bagi dalam bentuk heat capacity. Biasanya kalau macam ni bila they have uh, constant uh, 
constant mass lah maksudnya dalam kes kat sini calorimeter kan you tak adalah nak ubah-ubah mass calorimeter tu tak specific so you cari terus the value of C calorimeter tu okay mass tu dia dah include lah sebenarnya dekat dalam tu okay tapi kalau specific heat ni normally dia you punya substance lah tak kisahlah water ke ataupun um, you punya substance macam contoh aluminium ke apa sebab you boleh ubah dia punya mass okay So the unit here is joule per gram per degree Celsius. Kita tambah satu dekat sini mass gram tu eh. Okay <coughs> so this heat capacity uh, both lah eh. Uh, uh, ada factors that affect uh, both uh, capacity ni. Okay first is mass of matter and also types of materials. So mass of matters here let's say um When we want to compare 200 gram with 100 gram of water, of course 200 gram uh, water requires twice, dua kali ganda lah. Okay, 100 gram, uh, let's say you ada X uh, heat dia. Tapi kalau 200 gram you nak naikkan 1 degree Celsius, dia akan dua kali ganda, 2X. Okay, and then type of materials also, If, for example you compare between sand and water liquid and solid. Of course juga akan ada perbezaan lah kat situ. Example here 1000 uh, joule, you ada energy 1000, you boleh naikkan, raise the temperature of 100 gram of sand by 12 degree Celsius. But for water, the same mass with same uh, energy, you can raise the temperature by 2.4 degree Celsius. So nampak tak uh, ada perbezaan kat situ eh. So we can note here that okay the larger the heat capacity the smaller the temperature meaning that heat capacity C ataupun uh, Cs is inversely proportional to the temperature inversely lagi besar heat capacity lagi kecil dia punya temperature rise dia punya uh, temperature rise is delta T lah Okay, kalau you tengok contohlah kat sini tadi kan, you tengok equation pun you boleh tahu from this, nampak tak? This one is inversely proportional kan, kalau directly with Q, same goes to this one, also inversely proportional to uh, delta T here. Okay, maksudnya lagi tinggi CS, lagi kecil lah value of delta T. Okay, so these are the examples, <coughs> okay, of the calorie metric. Kalau you nampak eh kat sini. This one is a, uh, examples of the specific heat capacity. Specific eh. So, this CS. CS yang ada mass tu kan. A few lah ada punya substance kan. Kalau yang tak ada gram tu basically is for calorie meter. Okay kalau you tengok kat sini you tengok eh water. Saya tahu you biasa kita biasa pakai water kan. Even kita dah hafal pun value of water. Here in chemistry, uh, kita guna 4.18 eh. Before this, uh, saya tahu you biasa pakai 4.2, 4.2 kan even in physics. I know physics, you, the value is different. 4200 eh, saya lupa eh. Tapi, they different because of the, this one, Allah. They different because of the unit are different. I know physics they use kilogram. Itu yang for sure saya ingat. Yang, yang lain saya tak apa-apa ingat lah. But chemistry we are uh, we are commonly use uh, gram. Okay. So the value is 4.18. So jangan tertukar lah eh. Okay. <coughs> so kalau you tengok kat sini. Value of water sangat tinggi as compared to others. Kalau you tengok yang lain 0 point something je. 0 point something, 0 point something. In fact ethanol pun walaupun dia tinggi dia still uh, below than uh, water kan. So why do you think the water value is very high? That's why I add this uh, slide. Slide ni tak ada dalam you punya slide. It's just that I think I need to show you some application. Sebab macam boring lah kan. Belajar je tapi macam tak nampak. Uh, apa gunanya chemistry ni kan. Uh, this is The one you should know, very close to you, water. Especially orang Selangor. Sekarang isu water is very uh, apa? critical kan? Sampai orang buat troll. Yeah. Yeah? So, uh, bila kita cerita pasal water ni sensitif sikit lah sekarang eh. Especially kat Selangor, selalu tak ada air. Okay, so 
water kita tahu tadi very high specific heat tadi value dia kan 4.18 so kenapa kat situ apa sebenarnya yang berlaku kalau dia high specific heat of water so kenapa kan so this actually allows water to absorb a lot of heat energy without a large increase in temperature remember i mentioned previously uh, heat specific heat atau heat capacity is inversely proportional to the temperature rise maksudnya uh, even you punya heat uh, energy you tinggi tapi increase in temperature tu tak tinggi okay so you can imagine this the large amount of water absorbing heat from the air will keeps the beaches cool in summer okay you imagine Kalau lah uh, dia directly proportional tadi. Specific heat uh, uh, tinggi, dia punya temperature rise pun tinggi. You rasa boleh ke uh, Mak Saleh tu nak mandi time sama dekat pantai? Uh, menggelegak air kan? Of course nanti dia jadi uh, menggelegak so akan jadi tinggi kan? So kenapa kat situ? So that's why here we can conclude bila kita boleh relate kan with uh, this specific heat of water lah. Okay? So you can see here Without water, the Earth's temperature would be same as the Moon's temperature on the side that is facing the Sun. So kita tahu uh, our Earth consists of 70% betul ke? I'm not sure. Saya lupa dah sebenarnya. Dah lama eh? Tak belajar bad tu. Okay so paling banyak uh, in Earth is actually water kan? Uh, so kalau you imagine tak ada water, what is our temperature? 107 degrees Celsius. So whether maksudnya boleh ke kita nak survive Okay to live with this kind of temperature Okay so uh, ni salah satu lah uh, contoh yang paling dekat So we can know this is apa kita panggil um, uh, We have to praise our God right okay So for having this kind of Macam kita macam belajar sains, oh macam ni Sebenarnya benda ni dah lama dah kan Kita uh, kita just nak tahu, oh kenapa dia macam ni, kenapa dia macam ni kan So you can uh, explain this one or can as, uh, You boleh share to your friends, to your family members Sekarang kan dia ada rumah je kan So you can share with your friends or maybe with your siblings So why actually this happening At least akan tunjuk lah sikit uh, Science is very interesting sebenarnya kan Saya cakap je kan. Part-part lain saya pun tak kerti nak explain kan. Ha, mana part yang saya rasa uh, can explain, uh, relate with your surrounding kan. Application. So that's why nampak macam seronok sikit nak belajar kan. Tak adalah boring sangat kan. Sebab chemistry I think the subject yang paling student tak suka because of benda kita tak nampak. Kan? So especially when you when we talk about elektron, proton, oh tak nampak benda kan ha, So bila benda yang kita boleh nampak, kita boleh explain then you can explain lah so that uh, It will not be so boring kan Okay So ha, inilah dia yang saya mention about the uh, Apa? Inversely proportional of the high, speci uh, high uh, specific heat of water with the uh, temperature rise. Okay. Okay. I think uh, I just want to stop here. Boleh ke? Nak pula tak kalah eh. Uh, sebab yeah, the rest ni lepas ni dah masuk calculation dah. So yang ni uh, I think the calculation I will uh, discuss tomorrow. Before kita end our session, any question you want to ask regarding the thermal chemistry? Anything lah. Uh, pasal kerameter ke? Pasal before before this yang saya dah ajar? Ke semua okay? Sebab I think, yes. Uh, nak tanya yang pasal neutralization tadi. Okay, neutralization. Uh. Uh -huh. Kan, kan dia kata definition tu uh, one mole OH, one mole H dengan one mole H2O kan? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So maksudnya uh, dekat dalam chemical equation yang kita buat tu kita kena make sure yang uh, H2O one mole lepas tu acid dengan base dia pun one mole ke? Macam tu eh? Ah, okay. 
Uh, okay, thank you for the question. Now, memang the definition is one mole of H plus, one mole of OH minus and one mole of water. But macam saya cakap lah, kita neutralization, kita tak adalah buat H plus tambah OH minus produce water, right? Kita buat neutralization is acid and base. Maksudnya kita dapat complete set. So kita dapat NUH, kita dapat HCl. So that's how uh, when you look at this, betul lah sebenarnya bila kawan you tanya tu sebenarnya kalau you perasan, uh, dia automatically sebenarnya, of course the water you must have one mole. So automatically the H and OH akan jadi one mole. Sama juga dengan yang second ni, if you have one mole of water, automatically this is one mole, OH ni walaupun dia dua tapi you darab balik dengan setengah. So dia akan jadi one mole juga. Okay? Boleh? Clear? Dia akan hmm. automatic lah. Ha. Yang penting, you just balance, make sure water is one mole. Automatically yang lain, sebab you nak balancekan juga yang lain, you akan dapat juga nanti later one mole of H plus and one mole of OH minus. Okay, clear? Understand. Okay, ada soalan lain? Uh, Miss ada soalan. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Macam checkpoint lima tadi tu. Checkpoint lima, sekejap eh. Checkpoint lima. Okay, this one. Uh, kalau macam ada cara lain nak balance kan, macam bukan letak setengah tapi letak dua dekat KOH, boleh tak? Hmm, kalau dua dekat KOH, adakah dia balance? Kalau sini dua, so maksudnya, okay sekejap. H2SO4 plus KOH. Uh, K2SO4 plus water kan. Sebab ya syarat dia water mesti satu. Kalau you letak dua kat sini, okay ni dah dua. SO4 ni satu, sini dah satu. OH now you ada sekejap tadi apa? K2O K2O ah, eh. Yes. Also can ada defect tak pada sini? Betul tak? Saya check. Macam tak defect eh? H2, this is H2. Eh tak yeah, boleh. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, yes. Tak boleh, tak boleh sebab sini H ada dua saja. Bila you letak dua kat sini, H sekarang jadi empat. Dah tak balance. Hmm. Nak tak nak you kena juga buat macam ni. Okay. Nah, sebab dia tak apa. Yang penting uh, bila you nak balance, you just fix this one. Uh, macam ingat, jangan usik, jangan usik, jangan usik. Uh, neutralization dia mesti one more. So you make sure H mesti dua saja belah sini. So bila you letak dua, sini kita okay, sini dua, dua sini dua. So empat. You letak boleh adjust kat sini sebab hydrogen dekat sini. Uh, so tak boleh lah. Kan? Okay. Faham eh? Ada question lain? Uh, eh salah Any questions? Tak ada eh, faham eh? Okay, so I think I stop here So kita akan sambung esok uh, Lebih pada calculation uh, Calorimeter, tu yang saya cakap tu Yang calorimeter ni macam saya tahu you, you all biasa MC theta, C theta tu kan Theta or delta T lah MC delta T, C delta T Tapi masa bila you nak guna uh, formula tu dalam uh, solving problems ha, Kita akan pergilah so eh So kalau tak ada apa-apa so I will stop um, our session today